there, everybody. This is Grant, also known as The Collector 75, and welcome to another Transformers Japanese Master Force Pretenders review. Um, I actually haven't reviewed this guy for a very long time, and I, to be honest, um, after I sort of like did my long stint of some Pretenders reviews just a few months ago, uh, I wasn't actually going to review this guy. And there's a reason. Um, one of the reasons is that I have reviewed it before, and... To be honest, it wasn't complete. Um, if you've not seen that video, uh, I bought this. I can't remember who I bought it off now. I think it was a guy long before the internet, I think. And I bought it for like 50 quid, something like that. And it said, you know, um, Japanese exclusive uh, pretender uh, made of metal. And so I bought it based on that, really. That was the only thing I knew of it, apart from it said the name as well. And I got it. Um, it wasn't all made of metal like I was expecting, but it, obviously the robot here, he was made of metal. We had, literally had a die cast chest anyway. Uh, but it was a pretty damn cool looking pretender nonetheless. Um, but it's supposed to come with this long gun and a sword and it didn't. And I did email him um, about it because uh, he did say it was complete and he never got back to me. Um, but they were the pitfalls really. I'm surprised he even sent it to me because I was using postal orders back in them, in them days. So there you go. So I can't grumble. It's you know it's fifty quid. Um, considering now what this guy goes for these days, you know that's probably a bargain even without the bits. Anyway, we can open them up. As you can see, we've got the figure inside there, and then we do get this cool artwork. I'm trying to get it so you can actually see it. Um, yeah, there we go. Do get some nice artwork there, and you can sort of see the figure in there and everything like that. Um, now then, we're going to open them up. It does come in this weird. I put the box just over there. It does come in this weird, cheap, plasticky insert, which the pretend lot of the wood pretenders seem to come in back in the day. Uh, we do get some stuff. Now I'll come to these in a minute. Uh, he does come with all the little usual gubbins. He has some. One of these is quite interesting, really. Maybe someone out there knows. Not this one. That one's just an advert for something. And this one. Now we've got a used sticker sheet, which I'll stuck the stickers on. Uh, we got this, which is a sheet. Now, this is Japanese, obviously. Now, all these, um, I'm not quite sure where these are, because obviously we got the proper American ones, like Siren, Nightbeat, and Joyride and everything. But obviously, but in Japan, they were uh, different characters, weren't we? We had Minerva and what have you. And of course, we've got, if I can get it out of the light, we've got Darkwing and Dreadwing. Well, it should be Dreadwind, but it's the cool name Dreadwing there. And of course, they were Buster and Hydra in Japan. So obviously, Darkwing and Dreadwing did get some kind of release. I'm not exactly sure because I can't read Japanese. Um, that might be like a mail away special thing or something like that. But that would have been kind of cool to see what the boxes look like. So I've never really seen them or heard of them, to be honest. Anyway, right, so that's all the paperwork. Let's get that out there. Um, and then we're going to come to the figure itself. Let's get it open. It's in his usual weird little clamshell. So we're going to pop him there. Um, Oh dear, these don't want to come out easy. I was letting my son look at this earlier. Um, all the time while being... <laughs> um, expecting him to drop it on the floor, which he nearly did three times, but um, he really liked it. I think he just was really liked it because he's from Japan. He's got a thing about Japan at the moment. Uh, anyway, right, so oh, let me just readjust my camera. There we go. So then we come to the robot and his shell. Now, the shell is pretty cool. I actually really love the shell of this guy. Um, it's probably by far one of the better all I bought pretenders, um, to be honest. Um, it just looks great. You know, it's got some good paint apps all over because the American ones had this sort of style, but they, it was just a one color plastic. They could really have done with some paint apps, but they went to town on this guy, which is kind of cool. Dove has, does have his little helmet, but we'll come to him in a moment. And he comes with these two little guns. Now we're going to come to the little robot here. This is, of course, Metal Hawk. And you can see this is all die cast metal. I was going to say die cast plastic. This is the metal, obviously. Um, um, I really do not like the face sculpt. The sculpt looks nothing like the animation, unfortunately. It is one of those dodgy sort of things, unfortunately. But it's still kind of cool. It's, you know, and it really. What's the word I'm trying to find, grasp for, even? Um, as much as I love the shell, the robot is just as bad as some of the other pretenders that we got. Um, I have no idea why they decided to make it out of metal, maybe because of the name. Um, in the cartoon, he was actually just called Hawk. Um, so I don't know, really. Bit of a strange one. Uh, right, so this is him in his robot. Now then, he does have movable arms, and that is your lot, really. Uh, he does have these little guns. This really does remind me of the classic pretender Starscream. 
in the fact that he has the same sort of guns as Starscream and everything like that. And he turns into a plane. Um, pretty much like Starscream. Uh, at first, when I first got this off, I was thinking maybe it is just literally a retool of Starscream, but it isn't. It's got a bit more involved transformation. Probably too involved, if you want my opinion. I think they could have learned a lot just by reusing Starscream, or maybe Starscream came out after, I don't know. But that would have been better, if, I think. Let's take him to airplane mode, if I can get his bloody little guns out. Oh, go over Right, so uh, let's see if I can figure out how to remember how to do this. Right, so we pull this out of here, I believe. That's going to swing all the way over there. As you can see, he's got some landing gear there. Uh, these rotate up here. Fold out. So there's his wings. Yeah. Uh, these rotate up like so. And then in here, we've got some landing gear. And then we're going to plug these to the sides here, giving him his back wings. Uh, right, and there's Metal Hawk in plane mode. Now, it's it's a bit dodgy. <laughs> it's, um, I mean, don't get me wrong, to be honest, it's actually probably one of the better Pretenders uh, vehicles, if you want my opinion. Uh, but it's still... Funny, he's got some weird air intakes on top. Um, yeah, or well, missiles, maybe I don't know. Uh, he's got the wings that have got guns on. Um, I suppose that's not too bad. Um, he's got way bad visible head syndrome. Uh, but he's got a nice big white bot insignias on his wings. And you know, once you flip the landing gear away, uh, like that. You know, it's all right. I mean, the feet, the fins here, the tail fins do look a little odd. Um, so it's got some strange proportions. But then again, it is a pretender. And what do you expect? Yes. Right. Now then, we are going to put him in his shell. Normally, I would have done this wrong around the way. But obviously, I've taken it out of the box. And so we're doing it reversed. Uh, right. So to get him into his shell, we are going to literally transform him back into robot mode. We are going to flip his feet or tail fins, whatever you want to call them. We're going to take these off. And put them to one side, like you do with nearly every G1 weapon. Uh, we are going to, first of all, we should actually leave them in there. We're going to fold that way first. Then we're going to fold these way. Now, there's a specific way we've got to put these wings in. Which one is it? I think that one goes in first. And then that one on top. Um, if you do them around the other way, uh, you they don't fit together. So you have to get them around the right way. Then um, they've got a very minimal movement, allowing him to do the splits of sorts. And then we can leave him like that. Then we're going to come to our pretender shell and let's have another good look at it. Look at that. I love they've done a really good job of painting on the hair, everything. The great Autobot insignia in the middle there. I mean, he just looks fantastic. And but as usual, you've only got the articulation on the arms and the arms are very, very robot looking. So very blocky and square, um, unlike some of the other pretenders. Um, with their very humanoid looking arms and everything. Uh, right. So then we're going to split them apart. Then we're going to get our Sentra robot and put him in there. Now you've got, you've got to jam these legs in. They will go in eventually, when you get him in the right place, like so. Once you're happy with it, he will stay there. And then you can just stick him on the top and entomb him in the outer shell. And then once he's in it, this has got some weight behind it. He feels solid. Then we can take his little helmet, pop that on top. If you can get it on without scratching off the nicely painted hair that he's got and you've got watch this little red bit on top uh, that can easily come out and there is metal hawk in his pretender robot well robot pretender mode we're gonna say aren't we now before the only thing i had were these two little guns which he cannot hold in his hands so that was as far as i got then on the other day i was just already looking on ebay and i saw some guy who was doing replica weapons for lots of g1 figures um i looked Trying to find, see if there's the old bit I needed. And then I saw he was doing like a black Zarek head and things like that. And then I saw this. I thought, well, maybe he's got a Metal Hawk. And I looked, scrubbed it. And yes, I was in luck. He had a Metal Hawk gun and sword, which I needed. Um, and these are pretty good. Now, these are not as good as I thought. I thought, because though it looks like they've been 3D printed or something, normally you can get um, them made out of specific colours, which I think would have been better. Um, no, these are painted grey and then painted blue which is a bit strange because I put it in his hand earlier and as you can see it's scraped off some of the paint on the handle 
don't really bother me too much because obviously that's where you're going to be holding the thing. So we're going to stick that in his hand and then we're going to stick the sword in the other hand. Depending on how which way you want it. Now it's a bit of a tight fit so we're just going to give him that dodgy G1 sort of look where he's only just wedged in there. You can take these little guns and then stick these onto the side of that. And there we have it. We have a completed, at last, um, to some degree. I know they're not exactly real ones, but it's good enough for me. Uh, Metal Hawk. And he looks absolutely brilliant. Now he's got his fully armoured up. Love him. I think he's really good. Uh, yeah, well worth the 50 quid I paid for it, really. Um, sure it's 50 quid. Really, really good. I love it. Right, so there we go. That has been Pretender Metal Hawk. Uh, yeah, and I think I'll leave this review there. Um, we've got plenty more coming. Um, if you're sticking with me, because I've just up, literally uploaded part 29 of my Marvel G1 comics reviews. Um, I've got about... I've, I've made them all now right up until the end. Uh, but I'm just going to try and upload one every week. Um, otherwise you get pretty damn bored of those. Uh, yeah, so when they're finished, um, I've got a few more things in the pipeline. I've actually already done the Generation 2 um, comics. I actually made them about three or four, maybe five, six years ago. I've just had them all idle on my computer waiting for me to get around and finish off G1. So, um, yeah, they're ready to go. I mean, I could do them again, but being the art professional I am, I'm just going to use them ones. And then after that, I'm going to do Regeneration 1. Um, yeah, but I've got to film those. I haven't done those yet. And then I've got my Zoids comics, which I want to go through and do them as well. And then anything else that I can be bothered to do, really. But they'll take me quite a while. I mean, it's taken me nine years to do these videos. Still, there we go. Anyway, this has been Graham, the Collect 75. I shall see you all next time. Bye for now. Oh, 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 oh,